We are closing in on Major League Baseball's opening day. That's April 7th. Today we are previewing the NL Central, starting with some uh, key additions here, if you want to call them that, on your screen. A uh, really big one here was the Cubs winning the Seiya Suzuki sweepstakes, hoping the hype there is uh, real with the Japanese star. Uh, they also have outspoken pitcher Marcus Stroman, who joined them. I believe that was back in December. Now let's see which team our analysts believes will come out of this division. Top of the morning to DraftKings contributors, Matt Meiselman <laughs> and Nick Fryer. Hello, guys. All right, Top guys. Good Top stuff. Uh, let's start <laughs> with the team that currently has the best odds on the DK Sportsbook to win the NL Central, and that is last year's division winner, the Milwaukee Brewers. So the Brew Crew won 95 games last year. They're minus 135 favorites to win the division again, but they did lose their leading home run and RBI man from last year with Avisel Garcia signing in Miami. So like, are the Brewers still the class of the NL Central, like despite that big loss? Yeah, I still say so because the biggest thing for them is their pitching staff. We look at them last season, and offense was always a bit of a question mark as much as Garcia did produce for them last season. Uh, they still have plenty of good hitters there, but my big thing is when I see Burns coming back, Woodruff coming back, Peralta, Hayter. I mean, that is a that is a trio at the top that's among the best in, in all of baseball, if not the best. Um, and then Hayter is an outstanding reliever, too, of course, closing out games. Um, I know right now that they are, uh, you know, well, the other thing is, too, right? They won 95 games last season, 90 games for the Cardinals. Um, but they, like, I know it's a five game gap, but the Brewers coasted, you know, towards the end of the season. They were able to rest guys, you know, use pitchers a little bit less than their starters, a little bit less than they normally might if it was a, you know, really close run. So I like the Brewers to, to win the division. I think if you're looking for a little better value, though, take the over on them uh, for their win total at 89 and a half. All right, Matt, what do you think? Yeah, I actually might even be more optimistic about the Brewers than Nick is. So this is going to mean I have very boring things to say about the rest of the teams in this division. But I'm actually really excited about this Brewers team. And even though Abisel Garcia was their leader in two of the more important hitting stats, I actually don't think the offense got any worse. They picked up Andrew McCutcheon and Hunter Renfro, who I think are both probably marginal downgrades from Garcia. But they got two of those players, so the depth is better than it was last year. The rest of the lineup looks pretty similar. And then also, this was a team that dealt with some key injuries last year. Uh, the other reliever, in addition to Josh Hader, that really broke onto the scene last year and was unbelievable is Devin Williams, their setup man, who they didn't even have for the playoffs. So it looks like he's healthy this year. And the combination of all of that, I think, means that the Brewers are actually a better roster than they were in 2021. And I think the rest of the division, basically everybody got worse. So I think they should actually be even larger favorites than minus 135. Even minus 200, I think, isn't unreasonable for them. All right, guys. So also the St. Louis Cardinals. So the Cardinals come in with plus 190 odds to win the division. Even when the Cardinals seem down and out, they always find a way to make their presence felt in the division using a 17-game win streak last year to help them grab a wild card spot before losing to the Dodgers. Uh, their manager didn't make it. They have a new one now. How do you like the Cards' chances to build on last year's late run and maybe be a little more consistent in 2022, Matt? So as someone who had the Brewers to win the division last season also, the Cardinals' run scared me. And I don't really know what it is about this team. Like, if you look at their roster top to bottom, it's just not that good of a roster. And I don't really know how they managed to pull that off and get themselves in the hunt. Um, coming into this year... I think it really, I mean, it looks like a very similar team. I think the reason I'm lower on them than I even was last year is that Jack Flaherty's shoulder seems to be a real problem. And he's, I mean, for all that Adam Wainwright is, this is probably their best pitcher in Flaherty. So that's a really big deal for this team. I do think they're a pretty good offense, but this is not a pitching staff that I'm especially worried about. Their bullpen was problematic for a lot of last year, too. So I think they'll be okay, but I'm not really worried about them overtaking the Brewers for the division this year. Okay. Uh, Nick, do you think they have a chance here? Yeah, they always have a chance. I mean, the Cardinals are one of the, the premier organizations in all of baseball. They just know how to win, and they don't always have to do it by spending money. They're like kind of what the Oakland Athletics think they can be, but never actually really become. 
Um, but it is weird to see Oliver Marmol take over, and he's like 35 years old when Wainwright's 40 years old, I believe, yeah, he is. coming into the season. So a little odd. Um, but still, it, does, it doesn't matter who's in the manager seat. This team always is going to contend. Uh, I still like the Brewers more than them to win the division. But when I look at their win total at 84 and a half, yeah, minus 110, I like that one a lot too. Of course, two teams in that division went in 90 plus games last year. Um, you still have Goldschmidt, Arenado, O'Neill, Carlson, Edmund. And yes, the, the Flaherty and Reyes injuries are problematic. You added Steven Matswich. We'll see how that works out. You're not getting that luxury of uh, no DH in the NL this year. Um, but I still like them to at least get 85 wins this season. Okay. Okay, so the odds do drop quite a bit after the Brewers and Cardinals. Cubs are plus 1,000. But we do have an expanded playoff system this year, right? And the Cubs have slightly better odds at plus 500 to make the postseason. They did have one of the more intriguing offseason signings. You mentioned it uh, by bringing in Japanese star Seiya Suzuki. But, Nick, is that enough to make the Cubs a legit playoff contender? No, this is the team that has to prove it to me throughout the course of the season. I do think their win total is 75 and a half. This is the last one I will say that for sure you can take over on this one. Um, again, just looking at what the division had last year, I think they were the, the Reds were in third place with like 83, 81 wins. I do think the Cubs will be the third best team in the division, adding Suzuki, adding Stroman. I know that Miley ended up getting waived by the Reds at the end of the season after a horrendous September, but he was actually pretty solid throughout the majority of the season. Just a few hiccups here and there until September, which – things got pretty brutal. Um, but when we look at the expanded playoffs right now, I mean, Braves, Phillies, Mets, Brewers, Cardinals, Giants, Dodgers, Padres are the teams that I have kind of messing around in this. The Cubs would be right on the outskirts of that, but not enough where I'm going to go and take them. I mean, plus 500, you know, if you're a Cubs fan, maybe, but that's really about it. Um, also, Kyle Hendricks, big question mark. Three good months last year and three horrendous months. So a lot of question marks with this team as much as they made some good additions. All right, Matt, like enough to make you think the Cubs are a legit playoff contender with the signing, or do you have to wait and see? Yeah, not really. I mean, I'd honestly even lean more towards the no side at minus 700 to not make the playoffs. And it's kind of what Nick was just alluding to, where I just don't buy this pitching staff. I think the offense could be good with Suzuki. I think there are some young hitters on this team that potentially could break out this year, like Frankie Schwindel and Patrick Wisdom, who looked really good at times last year, but... I don't really buy Ian Happ and Nick Madrigal. The middle infield on this team, I think, is pretty far below average. And Andrew and Simmons, assuming he's the starter at shortstop, hasn't been the defensive standout that he was earlier in his career, and he's never been a good hitter. So I think there's a lot of holes in this roster. But, yeah, having this veteran pitching staff with really no true ace, I think Marcus Stroman is solid. I think he's an above-average starter, but he's not great. And then after him – there's a pretty sizable drop off with guys who I think you'd be happy with as your number five starter in Hendricks and Miley and Drew Smiley also, maybe Alec Mills, but like even he, I'm not sure, is a rotation starter. So the 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 pitching staff is really the big problem here. The bullpen was really bad last year too. So even if the offense is exciting with Suzuki, I think that being down on this team makes sense just because of how bad the pitching is. All right. As for the Reds. Plus 1,200 odds to win the division. Uh, their season win total only set at 74 and a half, so the division doesn't really seem likely right now, but they do have better odds than the Cubs to make the playoffs at plus 425. However, I mean, this is the thing. they got to, like, convince their fan base here that a lot of these moves that they made recently are kind of just temporary because they traded away some of their best players and Suarez and Winker, and then they lost Nick Cast Castellanos to uh, free agency. So how exactly is this team going to make a run, Matt? <laughs> Yeah, maybe Nick can speak to this more than I can about the motivations as far as why the Reds are doing what they're doing. But to me, all I'm really seeing is just a team that gave away their two best hitters and then also Suarez, who's one of their top five hitters also. But Castellanos and Winker are huge losses in the outfield, especially when you consider the guys that are now replacing them are not above average hitters. I think Senzel, Fraley, Naquin, Aquino, Akiyama, like all these guys are number four outfielders. Probably. I mean, there, there's some youth there, so there's a chance. But I think overall, this is not a very exciting roster. Jonathan India is definitely someone who is becoming a star pretty quickly. And I still like Joey Votto, but there are just the, the outfield really is a major problem. And that's, you know, that was the focus of the moves this offseason. And then just like the Cubs, this is not a very deep pitching staff. I think there's some solid veterans here, but 
I'm not really happy about the Reds rotation either. So I don't really know why the Reds couldn't just continue with what they had last year. Maybe Nick knows more about that than I do. But I, overall, I don't really like this roster. All right, Nick, can this team surprise and, and inspire fans to keep the faith? <laughs> Uh, no, they yeah. can't. I think by the mm, end of the season, cool. look, we don't talk about last place teams, you know, towards the end of the season, but I think if we were to have that conversation by the end of the year, we could be talking about the Reds being the last place team in the NL Central. I think that's very possible. Not necessarily because of how they're constituted now, because I do think if they stick with what they have, they'd be the fourth place team. But I wouldn't rule out that we see Castillo on the move, Molly on the move. Um, I don't think Vladimir Gutierrez or Jonathan India are guys they'll get rid of because they're just younger. Um, but Mike Miner, who knows? I know they just signed him, which is a huge deal. Um, but I just think right now they're trying to rebuild, you know, Hunter Green. What's he going to do this year? I know he got smacked around last year in AAA. Uh, Nick Lodolo, is he, he's going to make his major league debut more than likely this year. So you got some younger guys, and I think that's what they're kind of trying to move more towards is build, you know, build around that young core that they have, uh, the young talent that they have, I should say, um, and see if it's a core that they can rely on for the future. So, yeah, this is a team, you know, we're talking about win totals. I take the under on this one, what just one game below um, the, the Cubs on DraftKings Sportsbook, but they could easily be, you know, fringe 70 win. We could be talking like 69, 68 for them this year if they make a lot of moves um, that end up making them worse this season. Hmm. All right, finally, wow. we have the Pittsburgh Pirates. The projected win total mm -hmm. for Pittsburgh is 65 and a half. That okay. is the second lowest on the DK Sportsbook ahead of only the Orioles, oh. okay? A division title or playoff berth are long shots, obviously. So are there any bets worth making on the Pirates or at least maybe a good fantasy player to single out? Like, just give us something here, Nick. Well, Brian Reynolds is a guy who you can roster day to day, of course, if the price is right. Um, he proved that 2020 was kind of a fluke for him, obviously a weird year for everybody, but bounced back last year in a big way. I don't know how long he's going to be on the Pirates this season. I think there were rumors about him at the trade deadline last season, if I remember correctly. Um, but if we're talking about uh, looking at it from a betting standpoint, at 65 and a half, I think if you're a Pirates fan and you want something, a reason to care about the team this season outside of Brian Reynolds and maybe a few young guys, uh, I think that taking the over on that is reasonable. But you got to be, you got to have no faith in what the Reds are doing and got to assume that they're going to be making trades. So I think if you're everybody else, probably not the best way to go. But Pirates fans, I can understand you want to have something. You guys were good for a little while. I don't like seeing what they're doing right now. But um, but yeah, Reynolds. And then if you're a Pirates fan, you can consider taking the over here. All right, Matt, just like give us something. <laughs> well, I I lean towards the over also, but I think this might be more of a wait and see situation for me. Uh, the number one reason why I feel that way is I'm not sure that O'Neill Cruz starts the season in the major leagues. And after Brian Reynolds, he and he might even be a more valuable player than Reynolds, even in his rookie year. So at minimum, he's in the top two assets on this team. And if he isn't playing for the first six weeks, you could see a very slow start where you just have probably Kevin Newman as the starting shortstop or Cole Tucker. It's a team that'll look very similar to last year. Um, so hopefully if you like the Pirates to go over their win total, they hold on to Reynolds as Nick was talking about. But yeah, like it's really hard to make a case for this team being good. I think it's a little easier to make a case for them sneaking into 70 wins, let's say, and maybe finishing third in the division. Like that's the optimism. That's the extent of my optimism here. I do think that there are some exciting young players here, but there were also a lot of spots on this roster that have almost no chance to be valuable for them. So there's no real shot at a division, but I do think the over on the win total makes some sense for them.